All right, YouTube, here's Heiko again in my garage. Uh, today we're going to make some battery cables for my BMW Airhead motorcycle. Um, I need some for some future uh, troubleshooting video. And uh, I went to a local hardware store. Uh, this is welding cable, not battery cable specifically. Uh, really the major difference is that welding cable is more expensive and it's more flexible but it has the same copper conductor it the strains in there are a little finer that's why it's more flexible um, got myself the copper type terminals and uh, since I didn't have a crimper for this I made myself one and I think it turns out pretty nice crimps and then at the end some shrink tubing so this turns out pretty nice and now I'm going to take you along how we make one. So let's get started. Alright guys, so here is my piece of welding cable. Can run up to 600 volts, is temperature resistant up to 105 degrees Celsius. So that's 230 degrees Fahrenheit roughly. Um, it, this is 4 gauge wire. So. Uh, we're gonna get started first we have to get the insulation off I have a tool from Germany it's probably not available in the store here but it makes it really easy to um, let's see how far we need to take the insulation off put the cable in there and then just give it a couple turns and there it goes and then there is also some paper in here okay. all right we got this all nicely uninsulated now I'm going to grab a piece of black shrink tubing over here. Um, you need to put that over the cable first or else you're not going to be able to get it on afterwards. And uh, you can guess why, how I know that. Because I already crimped a couple of times and had to undo it to put the shrink tubing on there. So um, yeah, cable uninsulated. And then my, my little terminal here, I'm just going to because I don't have three hands. My daughter Sophia is filming right now. She she cannot give me a hand either. So I'm just gonna hold it with my vise. And now let's get to the part of my homemade tool. So since I don't have a crimper that works, I have another terminal crimper, but that's more for uh, coax cable. And it's not strong enough to actually uh, squeeze those terminals together. So that, that, that didn't work. So I found myself a nut that's big enough so that it fits there's another terminal loosely around this terminal cut it in half you can see that cut it in half and then on one side I made a little divot with a step drill and then I found myself a ball bearing that fits right into this divot and now I um, grab my trusty Nipex adjustable wrench here, uh, kind of like that size. And then I take the uh, nut half that has the ball bearing in it, put it to the bottom of the terminal, and the other half on top. Kind of have to line it up, make it so that I can hold both pieces with two fingers. Then grab my pliers and then uh, kind of line that all up so that I will crimp nicely in the middle of this uh, terminal. Yep. And then I take my already prepared cable with my shrink tubing on and stick it into the terminal as far as I can stick it in and then give it a good squeeze on my pliers here and then I make my pliers one step smaller put it on one more time now with both hands and give it a good yes! squeeze put that away then it gets a little stuck on here it's just because the the copper spreads out and kind of gets stuck inside the inside the nut but well, that's no big deal just a quick little uh, let's try with a 
Here we go. One side came off and the other side came off. The ball bearing makes a nice round divot, no sharp edges, and those crimps are super tight. It doesn't come apart. Then, it's a little tricky to, my, my shrink tubing is a little on the small side. I wish I would have one size larger. This is 3 8 So we're talking about 4 gauge cable. Those are all 4 gauge uh, terminals. It goes on but it could be easier. You can put a little bit of some dielectric grease on there to make it easier. I could do that. Grab some dielectric grease just a little bit. Let's pull that back on one more time. Just a little bit so that we can get the shrink tubing over the copper terminal. And of course, now I have grease on my finger, kind of like so. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm using 3.8 shrink tubing. It would have probably been better if I had, um, what is next size, an inch maybe? Oh, 3.8. Did I say 3.8? No, this is not 3.8. Oh, that's 3.8. That's 3 8 half inch. I wanted to buy half inch, but the store didn't have half inch. That's the whole trouble here that I'm having. And um, we work on this a little bit more. We're gonna, oh, now it's, now it's going. There we go. We don't want to put it on here too far because we don't want to have insulation between... Um, whatever contact we uh, we attach it to. Oh yeah, by the way, for the airhead um, ground cable and the this is the, the positive or the plus cable, uh, this needed to be 28 inches long, so I did 28 in inches from terminal to terminal. One side I put some uh, red shrink tubing on it. That's going to be the side that's going to the, to the ba battery positive. And the other side is attached to the starter, so it doesn't matter. Um, I needed a 5 16 and a quarter inch terminal. 5 16 quarter inch. On the ground cable, it's a uh, quarter inch on both sides. So now we have this. Now zoom out a little bit. Move out. And we're just going to shrink the shrink tubing on it. So one is already done, and now we just have to measure out. I uh, just compared to my motorcycle, it, I definitely want it longer than eight inches. So I'm probably going to, hey, let me, let me uh, take another measurement at my motorcycle. Press the pause button, red button. Okay, so I just went over to my motorcycle and measure it one more time. I want to make sure that my cable is 10 inches long, not like uh, the, the online supply house was telling me. Uh, one of the cables that they sell is 8 inches, the other one is 28. I'm now making mine so it turns out between terminal to terminal 10 inches. I think this will work a little nicer for me. Cut this off. You guys remember, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> I measured once, cut twice. All right, and we're going to uninsulate this whole thing again. A couple twists. And then this little paper strip in here. Don't want that either. And uh, the elephants are running upstairs again. You guys are already used to that. My kids always run around. I don't know if they have to walk down the hallway always jumping um, here's my crimping tool my terminal my third hand so I want both terminals let's think about this real quick okay I want 
them opposite direction. They have one flat side and one kind of indented side. And in this particular case, since one side is going to go against the uh, transmission and the other side is going to go on top of a battery terminal, I want them opposite direction. And then I almost forgot again my shrink tubing. This is kind of a dumb thing to do if you sh um, crimp the terminal on and then realize, oh, I forgot the shrink tubing. So push that over. Yeah, I need half inch, half inch uh, shrink tubing is pretty much the stuff that I almost use the most. That's why I'm out of it. Alright, put that down, grab my, just remind me Sophia, I want it opposite, so the white needs to be to the top, okay, white to the top, oh yeah, and I have to open up my tool here, one little click, and then I have to put that on make sure we we get it nice and centered in the middle of of the opening and also in the middle of the crimpable section there kind of like so i again have the ball at the bottom and just the the, the other nut half at the top kind of like it's not that easy ultimately i'm probably going to buy a crimper one of these days because i i do those things frequently electrical stuff and I would like to have a proper crimper but uh, with shipping times of like two or three weeks on Amazon these days I just didn't feel like waiting for it all right white at the top kind of like so stick all the little strands in there shove it in as far as you can and give it a good squeeze and now it's already not going to fall out. I just have to make sure that I'm not dro dropping my my crimper tool itself. And one more. Both hands. Squeeze. All right, and here is one half and the other half. It, it leaves a couple little lines here from the threads, but it's really nice and tight, really nice and tight. I've yanked on those really hard. Now we're going to put a um, little bit of some smear on here, just so that I can slide my um, shrink, heat shrink over there. Shrink tubing, heat shrink, whatever you guys call it. Here's my trusty paper towel. Come on. Almost, guys. This one here is a little bit more um, stubborn. Now this doesn't want to go over at all. It's like the shrink tubing has already started shrinking. Okay, now we got it, now we got it. There we go. That's pretty tight. That's when you when you need the right stuff. Okay, and one more heating.
and there we go now we have a ground cable and a positive 12 volt power cable um, worked out pretty well and all I needed to make was this little crimping tool here my two nut halves with my ball bearing and uh, these are really solid 4 gauge power cables I hope you like it I hope you like this little tech tip so in a pinch you can always make your own tools and uh, get away with it and uh, if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe thank you